Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to today's episode of Karbala Reflections. We are here today to discuss the role of women in Karbala as well as in the events that took place after. Assalamu alaikum, Sister May and Dr. Kate, thank you so much for being here with me today. So, the women in throughout history have always had what some would call an indirect role. Um, they would associate that indirect role with childbearing and raising kids. And so they would be given as a role as mothers or as sisters. Whereas on the events that took place throughout our Islamic history, women have always had what we would call a direct role. Uh, yeah, so, so, so in history, women, uh, just, just, just elaborating, women are, don't have an indirect role. They, 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 they're sort of almost obliterated from history because they didn't write history. A lot of the time they were perhaps illiterate. Um, it, was, it was only very learned men who got the chance to be educated or very rich people who only taught their sons how to read and write. So it was always from a male perspective. But they've always had a very, very direct role, a very big role. They're after all 50% of the population. Um, in Islam, in the Quran specifically, Allah SWT always addresses men and women, mu'mineen, mu'minat. Salihin, uh, Salihat, etc. Women are always 50 50 with men. Um, the story of Adam and Eve. Allah SWT doesn't blame Eve, he, he, he blames them equally. Oh, in the Quran, not everywhere. Precisely. We're talking okay. from an Islamic perspective because yeah. Islamic, Islam is just and fair. Now, the role of women is huge. There are infallible women in Islam. There is a very specific reason why we don't have women prophets, and that's simply because of, of the, the, uh, the unfortunate physical weakness of women. Um, it's because they, they may not be able to protect themselves as well as men would be. And that's the only reason, not because women are inherently different from men in their nefs. And not being a prophet or an imam ultimately doesn't actually lower anything from their spiritual being. Absolutely not. Women and men are equal in the eyes of Allah. Their, their deeds are equal, they are judged equally, and their roles are just as important to society and in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So going to the women, the, the feminine perspective of Karbala, women had a 50% role in, in, that, in that whole event. Uh, the women of Karbala, there were many of them. Imam Hussain alayhi salam took his daughters, his wives, his sister, um, the mu'mineen who were with him took their wives and daughters also. Um, the, the, the number of women there was huge. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it certainly almost matched the men's. And that in itself shows there was a need for them there. Because our imam wouldn't have just taken no. along his family if there was no need to do so. No, absolutely. And nothing's done without reason in Islam. And I think it's actually really significant that the women and children were there. It's obviously to make a stance, to make a point. And obviously, Imam Hussain Lay Salam knew it was going to happen. So the women needed to be there, Lady Zainab alayhi salam, you know, to kind of carry on afterwards. But I, I was just thinking it's the role of women is, is I'm not saying it's harder than that of men, but I was just imagining having to to be there on Karbala and witness your brother and your children be slaughtered and actually carry on after that, you know, have the Im immense strength that Zainab al-Islam must have had to then gather, you know, all the, the women and children and to kind of carry on after that and carry on the message of Islam. That's, that's you know, that's kind of, for me, is something else. And I think often kind of Islam, you know, talk about Shaheed and the men go off to battle and then get martyred. And there's a sense of glory in that. And, you know, it's kind of what people yearn for. But what about the wives that are having to sit at home and watch their husbands be killed? And I don't think they were just sitting afterwards. and watching, were they? They yeah. were actively supporting what their men stood for. Mm. The women who stay at home and not just in Karbala, the women who are left behind after wars and, and jihad and, and, and um, we're, we're in a country where there's, there's conflict. The women who stay behind are the women who are bringing up the next generation. They have to be single mothers. They have to work and provide. Mm -hmm. um, they, 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 they have to do a double role. Yeah. Um, and I think going back to the story of Karbala, the women there knew their role. Mm. They knew their role. They, they went there with, with the knowledge that their lot is not going to end in Karbala. Whereas the men knew that it was yeah. going to end in Karbala and they were going to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going to, you know, he, he was going to yeah. welcome them yeah. with, with, and, and quench their thirst there. But the women had another, another role to play and mm. perhaps their role was, um, their role was, I, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say more important, but mm. for want of a better word, their role was essential. Yeah. Their role was the story of Karbala. 
Their role was the continuation of Karbala. Their role was to pass on the message that Islam has to be preserved. So we had, an, we had, we had a, a, a situation at the time of, of Karbala, the time of, of Yazid being, being the, the Khalifa. We had a situation where the people of Sham were in a bubble. The people of Sham, they, they almost didn't even know about Ahl al-Bayt. They, they, they'd heard of Imam Ali. It was to such an extent that when they heard that Imam Ali salam was killed whilst kneeling in prayer, whilst doing sujood, one of the people of Sham said, Ali prays? He was shocked that Imam Ali salam prays. So you're talking about an environment of one of the biggest regions in, in, in the Islamic world, not knowing the true Islam, not knowing the true version, not knowing the Islam of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had Yazid's version. That had to be broken open. And the only way that could happen was by the sacrifice of Imam Hussein Alayhi Salaam. And the only way it could be spread and gotten in there was by the parading of the women. Otherwise, how would they know if the women were not paraded, if the women, it, it's as terrible as it sounds, as terrible as it is to be chained, it, got, it was a talking point. It got people to say, oh, Who are these women being paraded in our streets mm. chained? People got interested. They went down, they asked, and that's how the message got through. And then they found out who Ahl al-Bayt were. They didn't know. They didn't even know Ali ibn Abi Talib prayed. How, imagine the extent of their, um, their ignorance. Mm. And another story that comes to mind is um, just before the battle on the day of Ashura, when Imam Hussein was giving the enemy another chance yet again to not go ahead with what they were about to. And he stood there and, don't quote me, but roughly he was introducing himself as the grandson of the Prophet and as the son of Imam Ali. The One of the members of Yazid's companions uh, of his army said, I don't understand what you're saying. Of course he didn't understand what Imam Hussein alayhi salam was saying, simply because ill-gotten gains, haram money, um, eating things that are haram, all contribute to your to to your nafs, all contribute to your makeup and, and how you perceive the world. If everything that you're doing is haram, when you actually see the truth, you may not be able to understand it or comprehend it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us over and over again, it's really important that we don't do things that are haram, that we don't have ill-gotten gains, because they affect the way we perceive the world. They affect the way that we perceive haram and halal and just and what's just and what's unjust. Very interesting you said that because that was exactly the Imam's response to him that of course you don't understand. Anyone else would expect the Imam to say how can you not understand but he said of course you don't understand for the exact reasons that you just mentioned. So ultimately Islam was already in danger even at the time of, of the Imam going back to the first point she made and that just makes the role of women and the importance mm. and significance of Sayyidah Zayna being there yeah. and witnessing these atrocities even more important. Essential like you said and like you said it's not more important but it, it, it's it's crucial and you know and I was just thinking that like you said you know the men were killed and, and martyred and went to meet Allah and, and the Prophet peace be upon him but the women's suffering actually continued and I'm just thinking many lives of women it involves a lot of patience and suffering and kind of not the glory that sometimes the more perceived active roles that men can play you know involve and even just thinking when our imam Mehdi Islam, returns you know it's this whole thing about men wanting to go and, and fight and I'm sure there's a lot of women that also want to go and fight and be on the kind of the front line and die in his way but we know we're not going to have necessarily that that option because that's not our role we'll just have to be in, in different roles but it's I think it's interesting, but it's to say that the role of women is no less important and actually sometimes it's equally or not more important, but it's as essential. Ultimately in Islam, men have their duties towards their family, towards their religion, as do women. Mm -hmm. And these these roles are just different. Many seem to misconceive this and mm -hmm. assume that one is less than the other, whereas they're just different. I think it's really important. Um, the to discuss this point because actually the role of Lady Zainab Salam was crucial as was the role of Imam Hussein and actually one without the other wouldn't have been sufficient. He actually we needed Imam Hussein Salam to kind of sacrifice his life but we also equally needed Lady Zainab to carry on the message of that and I think it's sometimes that's often overshadowed um, which I think in society generally it is the role of women is kind of 
perhaps not held as in as in high esteem as as the role of men. Um, but that's not to say it's no less important. It's equally as and equally as valid. Um, That's definitely what Islam encourages, because from my understanding and all the research I've done, ultimately, when it comes to family, when it comes to religion, anything, women and men both have roles, whereas these roles are just sometimes different. Mm. That doesn't mean that one is less than the other. Mm. I think it's sometimes harder for women because it's often we hear about men going off to be martyred and, you know, having the glory. And, you know, when our mom, Saman, Laysan returns, you know, it's about wanting to go fight in his army, which is obviously the male role and the role of women. There may be many women that want to fight, but obviously for various reasons, that's that's not kind of what our duty is. We have to have slightly different roles, but it's, and that in itself, I think on behalf of women involves actually being patient because, you know, it's, yeah, it's, um, There's, there's more patience involved in, I think, in, in the role of women and it doesn't kind of get the, the same kind of attention as the role of men. And I think the role of men and women are complementary. And I think that's highlighted between the Mom Hussein and Lady Zayn. Yeah, they're complementary, but they're not the same. And do you mm. think they should be the same? They can't be the same. If you look at any organization um, and, and if you have, for example, a retail organization or an office, you have a manager, you have a secretary, you have a personal assistant, they can't all be managers. They can't all be personal assistants. They can't all be secretaries. They can't all be buyers. They can't. You, you have to have a division of tasks. And w- what's happened essentially here is a division of tasks. And the tasks that, that men have to perform are the tasks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them physically for. And the tasks that women have to perform are the tasks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them physically for. So, so, so a man can't give birth to a child and, and rear that child, and, and, and especially when there were no formulas or, or any means to feed the child. It was only the mother who can do that. That's the division of role. It doesn't mean that women are less intelligent. It doesn't mean that women can't perform certain tasks. I think cult. Certain cultures have overshadowed the Islamic message. The Islamic message was of equality, of knowledge, of teaching everyone. It wasn't just about teaching the men to read and write. It wasn't just about women played an essential role. Fatima Zahra was eloquent. Fatima Zahra wrote, wrote you know, du'as. She, she gave speeches. She was active um, amongst everyone, not, not just the women, after the death of Muhammad sallallahu she went and she talked to Abu Bakr and she talked to everyone. I think afterwards, a lot of cultural influences came in. Um, certainly in Iraq, we, for, 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 in Iraq for a long time, we had, we had it where it was, it was haram for women to, 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 to study. It was haram for women to, um, to, to take certain jobs. And of course, you mean by it was haram culturally haram? Well, It got mixed. It got mixed, bit. but ultimately, <laughs> uh, uh, it, yeah, ultimately, it's, it's not Islamic. Yes. It's, it's it's not it's not forbidden for women to, to learn. It's not forbidden for women to go to university to or to become doctors. It's essential. It's essential to society, and that's something that it's it's a learning process. It's it's it, pe- people have come to accept it, not not because not because they were forced to, because they understood that this is true Islam, and that was what we had in the beginning. We've just lost that, unfortunately, sometime in our sometime in our history. So you've touched on women being intellectually the same as men, and you've touched on the clear physical differences that no one can deny. What about spiritually? We we went back a few a, f- a few sessions back. We did discuss that ultimately there was no woman that was a prophet or an imam, and we did say that it doesn't lower from their spiritual being. However, just because we didn't have a woman prophet or imam, does that mean women can't reach that status? Well, Maryam alayhi salam did, Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam did, Khadija al-Kubra did, It's, uh, and, and Asya was mentioned in the Quran. There are many women mentioned in the Quran. And not just women. mentioned in the Quran. Um, a whole Zay- surah. Maryam has a whole surah. She has a whole surah, and she was, she, she was, the, she, she was so pure that no one, that, that even... Even though her, her, her family did question her as to where you, you, where did you get this baby from? Ultimately, they had to concede that she was pure. That there wasn't. If, if it was anyone else, they couldn't. So it's only it, the reason women aren't in that position is not because they can't be. It's not because their brain can't reach that um, that that level. It's only because of their because physically. They're, they're less able to defend themselves in certain situations. I think I said that before. Um, it's, it's nothing to do with spirituality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, 
will he will judge us equally. He will he will look at our actions in the same way. Um, and and going back to what Sister Kate said, so sometimes our roles may seem very different, but in their difference, the patience and the um, and the perseverance that that we have to go through means that even though men perhaps have to be a bit more physical about what they're doing, like in Karbala, where they're actually physically fighting, just just the just knowing for for Zainab السلام, and for the women with her that they had this precious message to put across that within itself was work that was brain work that wasn't and don't forget don't forget women have the the money and the fortune of a woman was the foundation of Islam okay Khadija Kubra السلام. Khadija Kubra السلام, in her marriage to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam broke so many cultural taboos that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to break in that marriage. Number one, she was older than him. Number two, she was, she proposed to him. She was, she was the boss. She was his boss, okay? She was, she was his boss. He was, he was working for her. In, in terms of... Uh, he was working for her. Yeah, he, she, outside he, the marriage. Absolutely. So he, she was his, his she, she, she was his employer. Um, and he was known as a Sadiq al-Amin and she wanted to, to hire him. To go to to sell some of her some of her cargo her products um, to Sham and that's that's how they met and and she was very impressed by him and then she proposed marriage to him um, and it's, it, she was the first Muslim who else has that role I mean who who's got that position the first Muslim was a woman Islam was founded on her money she spent all her fortune on Islam she was a businesswoman. She was articulate, she believed in him, she supported him when no one else did. Imam Ali alayhi salam was young at the time, he was a second Muslim. Okay, so the first Muslim in Islam was a female. So the feminine role is essential. It's different, but it's essential. And you, you can't have everyone being the same. We'll go back to the saying, too many chiefs and no Indians. There's nothing wrong. Everyone has a role to play. And each, each role is as valid and as important. It's like having your heart pumping and your lungs taking in oxygen. They can't all be the same cells. They can't all be the same, perform the same function. Otherwise, you wouldn't function. Your fingernail isn't less important than your heart. It plays a really, really important function um, in, 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 in allowing you to, to be able to plant things, feed yourself without injuring yourself, etc. So that's my point. My point is difference doesn't mean that you're inferior. And in the message of Karbala, even more so, the women were definitely didn't play an inferior role. The, 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 I think, I, I personally think they played a superior role. They, they walked through every single city in shackles and every single town and village. And they had to say the, the terrible story again and again and again. And they had to say it in a way where the people would understand it. I think we spoke in, a diff- in, in, in another program about how you come across in your in commemorating Karbala and how you come across in the morning of Karbala and the active morning of Karbala. It's really important how you come across, how you say your story for other people to, to, to understand it. And they had to think about that too. It wasn't just a case of mourning and wailing and pulling off their, their veils. That wasn't the way they operated. They knew what they were doing. They knew that they had a message to put across and they did it really effectively. Very effectively, mm-hmm. just like she said, because as much as we listen to the maqtal and as much as we remember the events that took place on the morning of Ashura, mm-hmm. we put just as much, as much emphasis on Sayyidah Zainab's speeches. No, no, absolutely. And, and mashallah, really well kind of said as well. I think it, it's so... And, and I agree, I think in a way was superior and, and harder in, in some degrees as well. And like you, going back to the intellect of women, I think, yeah, we know as women kind of, for those of us that are mothers, that is kind of the most important thing. But actually not every woman is a mother for whatever reasons. And I think it's women, we have intellect, Allah has given us intellect as much as men. And we need to kind of activate that. Even mothers, you know, the children will grow up. So it's... We need to be very kind of present in society because it, again it brings different insights as much as the men um so kind of equally equally valid and i, I just um, wanted to point out another thing the the children of karbala the children of karbala were in the custody of the women of karbala the children of karbala were the next generation you had one imam who was ill who couldn't even fight at the time of karbala and he was surrounded by these women who protected him, these women who made sure that, his, that, that the, 
the Ahlul Bayt, the lineage of Ahlul Bayt carried on. And the children of Karbala learnt about Karbala from the women. And, and the, message, the message that we have today, what we have left of it, unfortunately, it's, it's again, we, we, we can't say that we, it, it, they were so suppressed and there are so many hadiths that have been lost, but whatever we have left, whatever form of Islam in, in how it was at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala wanted it to be is because of them. Mm. You and I are praying and fasting and know Allah because of them. And we owe it to them that, to, to carry on that message in, in that way. Well, I just want to add, I think that's where the feminists get it so wrong because the feminists are trying to kind of equate men with women and saying that women we have to be like men, we have to do what men do, we have to be, but actually we don't. They're kind of completely missing the point. We've completely think, lost out. Yeah. Now we, we have to do out. both roles. Yeah. Now we have to do the, the role We have to prove of, ourselves that we can be equal to men and still have the caring, nurturing things that are expected from us as mothers and as, as caregivers. And then who, look, who, who, who looks after the household? But so Allah has, has given to. us different roles, they're, but they're equally, if not more, kind of exalted because we it's through our women that obviously the next generation kind of are literally born. So, Absolutely. And, um, I, and I want to make the point, sorry to yeah. cut you off there, that being looking after your household and being the manager of your household doesn't mean that you don't get educated. Mm. In fact, it's more important that you're, you're educated. Yeah. It's more important that, that, that your family concentrates on your education because your education means that your children will be educated, that you'll mm. put an emphasis on that for your children. Mm. And being, and unfortunately, now we have such negative connotations with the word housewife, home carer, um, homemaker. It's so negative. Mm. If someone wants to insult you, they oh, housewife. That that's it's it's or, or you know she's just a housewife. That mm. that we've got it so wrong. Yeah. This is how you break up a family. This yeah. is how you break up a society. Yeah. And that's what's happening through feminism, exactly. basically. So although yeah. although I would I wouldn't feminism tried and they got some parts right and some parts wrong because they hadn't really understood what they were fighting. They yeah. hadn't got their message right. They hadn't got it together. So. No, feminism, they, they, there, was, there was a lot of inequality at the time. Women weren't allowed to vote, they weren't allowed to inherit. Of course they have the right to inherit and the right to vote the, and the right for an education. Women even couldn't get into Oxford, couldn't get into mm. Cambridge. It was a big deal for women to, to get but into education. I think education. it's a radical, it's a second wave feminist, a radical feminist that have come to kind of try and annihilate man and say the woman, the only role model for women is to be the career woman, you know, she shouldn't be a mother. I think the first wave feminists were trying to fight for the more I mean, equal I think rights, ultimately but, there's, there seems yeah. to be three concepts. The first one is is that men are superior and then feminism came along and tried to bring women up very very high to be equal or above men in all aspects so put a lot of pressure on women and then Islam came Islam was always there by the way yeah well, well <laughs> no I mean I meant I meant I the Islamic perspective yeah. the Islamic perspective as is the third perspective mm -hmm. being that exactly like you said they are the same but they are different they're equal. They're equal but different. That's a better way of putting your it. Your heart and your lungs and your liver, without them you cannot function, mm -hmm. but they play different roles. That's mm -hmm. the best analogy I can think of. Y your heart is just essential to your body as your brain. And you can't make it, you can't say, oh, I can go without one. You can't do that. And I think ultimately that goes back to the reason that Imam Hussain alayhi salam and his companions chose to take the woman alongside them is because they had a role. We discussed a lot um, the role that they had after the events of Ashura. But you, you did touch on it slightly, the role they had during those days, taking care of the sick imam that we had, taking care of the children that were watching what was happening to their fathers. They had a very active role throughout the 10 days that led to Ashura, as well as all the years before that. And an active role throughout those 10 days a very active role afterwards until they got to Yazid's palace and then they had the responsibility of carrying on the message and the events that took place, the accurate version of, of events because otherwise had it not been for Sayyidah Zainab and the other ladies all the events would have been narrated down to us through the army of Yazid. So their, their message and their responsibility continued after that and Alhamdulillah that's Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah for it because we we are where we are today. And don't forget, the main thing is that they bore witness. Yes. They were witnesses, and being a witness is so important. You know when, when, when we say, I bear witness, that there's no Allah, there's no God but God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Bearing witness to events, being 
an eyewitness to something mm. is so important. It, 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 it gives validity to what you're saying. It gives validity to the message. Just me hearing it from someone else is not the same. No. I was there in Karbala. I, I saw the, son, the, the grandson of the prophet being slaughtered. I saw the injustice. And I'm telling you, this is what happened. It, the, 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 ha, that message is so profound. It, you can't do it any other way. Just going to something about witnesses, from my understanding, for example, people who uh, study Islamic history in detail, um, regardless of what level they get to, there seems to be a very big study on uh, the authenticity of hadiths and of events. And as sad as it is, and as heartbreaking as it is, that it was really Sayyidah Zainab that was mm -hmm. the witness on that day, in many ways, I, I personally see it as a blessing because the role of the witness is important and what better witness to have than Sayyidah Zainab whose words are the truth, who speaks the truth and who narrates the story down to us in the most accurate way. Uh, it was heartbreaking, but going back, I think that's what Sayyidah Zainab meant as well when she said, I see nothing but beauty. It wasn't that seeing her family members killed and humiliated in front of her was, was beautiful. It was that the outcome of those events were, were beautiful because it was continuing the message of Islam, the true message of Islam that was already at risk at that time. And it's, it's kind of what I'm trying to imply as well with that I'm, I'm heartbroken that the events took place. I'm heartbroken that she and the other women and the kids were witnesses to this event. But Alhamdulillah for her being there for her being that witness that Sister May was speaking about the important role of a witness that it was her and that we are sure that the message that has been delivered to, uh, to us has been through her. I mean, ultimately, Imam Hussein and his companions had to fight Yazid and his army with their swords because that's where it, it got to after many chances of give, like, giving them many chances to retreat and to not attack the family of the Ahlul Bayt just like they fought with their swords to carry on the message of Islam, Sayyidah Zainab and the other woman carried on the message of Islam and fought the army of Yazid with their tongues. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, Sister May and uh, Sister Dr. Kate for being with us today. And thank you for joining us on another episode of Karbala Reflections. Today's talk about the role of women in the history of Islam with an emphasis on the role of women in Karbala has been eye-opening. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.